Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Abaddon. Last episode, we cleared out a cave of rats and then proceeded out into the free roads here to see what we could do. There was a bunch of soldiers here guarding over what they could, they couldn't guard very much, and we found a farmer here who wants us to deal with some wretches who are over in this area. Before we do, we can explore around a bit over here. As you cross the bridge, you receive a brief cool breeze. Shima, who is sweltering in his black garb, sighs in relief. It is a great honor to wear the black of the Shadow Walker, but it can sometimes be... wearying. Sevelyn, who is also miserable, looks over at him. We both need to wear armor, but couldn't you wear something white over it? It wards off the heat. <laughs> this is one point where our traditions might be poorly chosen, but I wear these garments with pride anyway. They are all that I have left of my home. Yes, it sounds like something happened to to at your home. Perhaps you were banished? Exiled? I imagine we'll find out soon enough. Oh, here come the wolves! Kill them all. And easily done. Oh, and we even got some more animal skins. At least we're getting some loot from it. There appears to be something in this direction. Let's find out what it is. There's a sign. You enter a clearing in the middle of a particularly tall and wild thicket of cacti. There's a tower in the center, several floors made of huge blocks of rough stone securely mortared together. When you get close, your hair stands on end. There is power within this tower, raw, magic barely controlled. There are no guards in sight. And yet you suspect that the owner of this tower has powerful defenses. And Angevim, Sage. All who come in peace are welcome. Oh, a sage. I'm sure she'd be very hot, very uh helpful. Oh that does not look pleasant. Well, let's go in. Oh, when you get close to the stone figure, it turns to slowly look at you. Its eyes glow a dim red. Then it turns back and is still. They don't seem to be able to talk. Oh, and we got another lockpick. Yeah, she's defended. There's a second floor. Ah, there she is. There's a woman sitting in this throne watching you enter. She is very small, thin, and pale robes are long and elegant. They flow to the base of the throne and curl along the floor almost where you are standing. She touches her fingertips to her forehead in greeting. Welcome, Jason, Hand of Avedon. I am Angevine of the Kellum. I sensed your presence and I allowed you to enter. Our kind should always be hunting for allies and trading power. Partners. How do you know my name? Little bits of parlor trickery. I have watchers, you know. Pay it no mind. Tell me about your tower. It is a humble thing, is it not? And in such a dry and unpleasant place. But with the aid of my helpers, I will expand it. It will never be fashionable, but it should at least have the comforts, yes? You built all of this yourself. In a sense. My helpers made it, but I made them, so yes, I suppose I did. And yet I take no pride. It is a stony and lumpy place. How long have you been here? Ah, who knows? Time does such funny things. I think I have been inside this tower for a year, but I can't say how much time has passed outside. Who are your helpers? She waves at the stone men standing in the alcoves. The servants of, of rock. I make them. It is my specialty. They are very helpful for construction and light cleaning. She gives you a little wink. And for crushing into jelly those with no manners. They are quite impressive. I thank you, but I am sure my housekeeping is not what you came to discuss, yes? What do you need? You are from Calamdariel. I am. A beautiful land. Ah, the food, the music, the dancing. Also no cacti. Towards my home, no longer. What did you do there? I made my talents available to the nobles for a price. One with my natural talents is always found to be of value. Why did you leave? Angevine looks mildly shocked by the question. Such direct questions about matters of politics and alliance are felt to be rude. Okay, then. 
Ahem. <coughs> uh, Angevine curls up in her throne, her slender legs folded up underneath her. You might be fooled by her girlish exterior if you couldn't sense the power that flows from her, and if her stone guardians weren't staring at you. You wish to trade with me. Indeed. I spent my long hours here making crafts of some value, and I purchased from travelers materials for my work. In addition, there is a certain item I would like to obtain. I would reward well at whoever could bring it to me. Let me see your wares. Ah, oh, various runestones. Hmm. Opal ring. Hmm. And... Lockpicks. Handy. Uh, I think we can sell a few things like that. Those. That. And that. Yeah, I think that's all. What are you trying to obtain? A Libra. A magical journal full of novels and minor notes of spellcraft by a Kavar mage named Ahmed. It currently rots, unused and unread, in a library near here. I can make use of it. In fact, I believe it is the library of Zethron, the dragon. Uh, how might I get the book? Your travels include the lair of the dragon, correct? You might trade for it. You might sneak it out. I trust your judgment. You want me to steal a book from a dragon? Oh, crude theft might not be necessary. Well, it probably will, but the dragon would never notice. If you stole a single coin from its hoard, it would be furious. But books? I doubt that the worm cares. Yeah, we'll see about that. When you put your foot on the first step, you suddenly feel very dizzy. The feeling of vertigo starts to overwhelm you, so you back away. Also, it's nice to see a tower that is more than two floors. Two floors is a house. Two floors is not a tower. For things that I may dislike about uh, Avedon, it does make some. It does make various uh, improvements. At least from what I've seen so far, mind you. There are some things that I'm not a fan of. <coughs> the mini map here. It. Uh, you can only see where. You can see where you've been when you bring it up like this. But other than that, not really. But anyway. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, my throat. Okay, let's take a look. This path heads north, and there is a building there. What is this building? There is an abandoned farmhouse at the side of the road. It's quiet and empty, and the walls are crumbling. It's an odd chill in the air here, making you shiver despite the desert heat. There are no tracks on the ground, not even of wolves. Odd. Which means undead. Probably a ghost. I would not be surprised. Let's see. Coins, leather belt, leather gloves. Huh. Nothing showed up. Maybe it's further in than this farm. Oh, didn't mean to click that. <coughs> Well, there's a the north exit to the lands. There's the rest of the farm. And there's an underground area over here. Well, I suppose you can investigate it. Okay. Well, let's see what's in here. The cellar of the abandoned farmhouse is littered with bones. Some animals, some wretch. It's icy cold down here. You feel like you're being watched. Bones. Cold. Paranoia. During your extensive training, these were clearly listed as the three main symptoms of monstrous infestation. Or undead infestation, I think. Which is what I believe is going to be down here. Let's see if we can clear it out. <coughs> Nothing yet. You hear a sound behind you. Bones scraping across stone. The skeletons behind you rapidly begin to reassemble themselves. You kick a few of them apart before they can complete themselves, but you can't stop all of them in time. This is convenient. The infestation here is going to come to you, making it much more convenient for you to purge it. Well, goody. Ahem. <coughs> Alright. Let's let them... You know what? That was handy. You don't have a missile weapon. That's a problem. Hey, 
And that one didn't kill him. That one killed him. Okay, at least they're all coming to us, so this is indeed making it easier. A cursed skeleton! There's the big one! Yes, the savage blows will certainly help. Almost got him. And there we go. Did he drop anything? Ruby ring! That is actually helpful. Doesn't look like anything else has dropped, though. Oh, moving is actually regenerating our health. Interesting. Does not look like there is anything else back here, so I think we're good. Alright. Well, that was cleared out fairly easily. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. My throat seems to be drying up a bit or something. I don't know. Sevelin looks up the hill toward the dragon's lair to the northwest. He shakes his head. Dragons. They live in our land, eat our food, yet they are not required to follow the stone code. It is bothersome. If they live in your lands, they should follow your laws. <laughs> I agree. But I would like to see someone tell that to the dragons. Yes, of course, he wouldn't. The road rises steeply to the northwest. It is lined to either side by massive pointed spires of stone. Granite fangs crudely shaped with magic and brute force. The path to Zethron's area is meant to inspire awe. And yet, it has not kept the ratchets away. You can hear their cackling laughter ahead. There are many of the aggravating creatures loitering before the dragon's lair. You wonder why the guards are tolerating that. As you advance, a figure steps out from behind one of the stone fangs. A shadow walker from his garb. His face is completely obscured. He is armed, but his long curved blade stays sheathed at his side. He walks toward you. Hello. The hooded man stands in the middle of the road, blocking your path. He doesn't draw his weapon, though. He inspects you carefully. Yes. You are Jason. It is my purpose to know such things. I have been waiting for you. I need to speak with, with you. It will only take a moment of your time. Are you from Avedon? No, though I deal with hands and eyes frequently. To some of them, I am a welcome visitor. As I hope, I will be for you. All right. Let's talk. Of course. I will be brief. I have a unique opportunity for you. Go on. I would introduce myself, but I would prefer to keep my name private for now. For now, just think of me as the Wayfarer. I often contact hands and eyes of Avedon and offer them work. Easy tasks. Great pay. The sort of thing only servants of Avedon can do. That only servants of Avedon are allowed to do. And this is permitted? Of course. All is permitted to hands of Avedon, as long as Redbeard approves. Or never hears of it. Why do you think there is such demand to work in a place that requires so much work and so much risk? It is the authority, the freedom, the power, and from that the wealth. And what can only servants of Avedon do? Whatever they want. It is the little secret of Avedon, the secret everyone knows. You are rewarded with the ability to use your influence for great reward. Now it is time for you to claim your reward. And what do you want? It is simple. Recently, a Hoaglandian named Riozo came to Zethron's Airy. He wants something from the dragon. I need to find out what that is. Enter the caves, obtain this information, and deliver it to me. Why can't you find this out? Because the dragon keeps all his dealings between him and his supplicant secret. Thus I require someone with influence. One who can wander the dragon's caves and investigate with discretion. And why do you want to know? You can't see the wayfarer's expression, but he sounds amused. I'm sure you realize that such things are closely guarded secrets. It is a small price of a piece of information, and you will be paid well. That is all you need to know. I don't know who you are or what you're doing with all this, but 
It seems relatively harmless. A bit of information. As long as it isn't something that could threaten an empire, I will do what you ask. I am pleased. It takes some hands much longer to see wisdom. He points to the north. There is a barrel behind the spire. When you have learned what Rioza wanted, write it down and leave it in the sand under the barrel. Once I have retrieved it, I will leave your reward. Now I must depart. I have much to do and far to travel. Excuse me. Before you can ask any more questions, the wayfarer leaves. He walks down the road to the east. Alright. Very, very curious, mysterious. There is an old weather-beaten barrel behind the stone spire. You look inside it. It is empty. Alright. Well, that's the way to the dragon's lair. I think we'll investigate there later. For now, we still have other things to do here. Looks like an old caravan was here. Hmm. Very curious. Oh, nothing over there. I wonder if that's a caravan that was robbed. <laughs> Come on. I see you, wolves. Yeah, come on. There we go. That's those wolves dead. Killed quite a few of these wolves. I am happy for that. Alright. Oh, there's something over here. A vile smell assaults your nose. Rotting and other odors even more vile. It is not the reek of a dungeon. Worse, it's the smell of a tannery. You can guess why it is out here. Tanneries are commonly forced to locate themselves far from human settlements. As you walk up the path, you see that the door to the central building is cracked open. Then it closes. Someone was watching you. Tannery. Hmm. Why would they be watching us like that? Something is odd here. There's a lot of tanning skins out here. Hmm. Nothing in there of note. Four lockpicks? No thanks. And that one we can't pick. Can't pick that one either. You are now inside the tannery where the skins are trimmed and processed. At least it looks like a tannery. The vats are empty and the furs and skins on display are dusty. The reek that assaulted you outside is still ple pleasant, present, but faint. The building is strangely cool and pleasant. There is a man here in a leather jerkin. He wears a long, thin blade at his side. Welcome, traveler. I am Tartum. I welcome you. Have you come here to purchase fine leather goods? Because if so, I can aid you. He has a faint smile on his face, as if something is amusing him. You aren't sure what. You're a tanner here. Oh, yes. I just kept moving away from Goldcrag until they stopped telling me to keep moving. Then I built my tannery here. Doesn't look like you're doing much in here. Well, there aren't many traders out here, are there? He smiles. Who buys your wares? Why, you, hopefully. And merchants some supplying the dragon's cave sometimes. It's quiet here. Except the wolves, of course. Is there any other way I can help you? He still has a faint, cocksure smile. His hand rests on the pommel of his blade. You notice that his hands are like the stains and burns you would expect to see on a tanner. Odd. I would like to know something about the area. Why, I would be happy to help. I don't walk outside much, too warm. But if there's something you are looking for, you can ask. Tell me about the dragon's lair. I can't. I've never been inside. There are a lot of wolves on the road. There are indeed. Makes me wish someone, something would be done about it. Yes, indeed. His tranquil smile is starting to bother you. A caravan was robbed near here. I'm trying to find what was stolen. Really? How noble of you. I think I can help. There is an opening in the cliff face to the north. A lot of garbage there. I've seen an ogre and some wretches going in and out of there. It is odd. Odd? Why? Because the passage ends in a dead end. If I didn't mind the risk, I would investigate. Maybe a secret passage, or you would have to look very closely to find it. I am a Hand of Avedon, and Tartum, I need to question you. 
He seems to be very amused by this. Oh, really? He holds his hands wide. I would so hate to have Avaton suspect me. I am eager to help. Please tell me, what is the problem? Someone has been selling weapons to the wretches. His smile fades. Tartum looks genuinely irritated. Have they? Really? I suspect you are correct, very perceptive, Hand of Avedon, and tell me, please, what insightful soul told you that I was responsible? I'm asking the questions. Really? Then let me guess. It was Abby! I knew this would happen the moment I heard that fool went to Avedon, spilling out words, letting anyone who cares to listen know what we know, and now he wastes your time as well, sending you to question me, a fellow servant of Avedon. You are a Hand. And I, actually, sent out here by Hot Miranda to find out who was supplying the wretches with weapons. My identity was to be a secret. No longer, apparently. I will have to leave soon before I wake up with, a, with my throat cut. Since you know who I am, I will help you if I can. I will unlock my safe house for you. And now that you know who I am, I suppose you have some questions for me. Well! That was a twist I certainly didn't expect. Okay, then! Uh, I'd like to know something about the area. I'll tell you what I can. I'm only one pair of eyes, but I have seen some things. Dragon's lair, nothing. Wolves on the road. And wretches as well. They have been advancing, and the pact hasn't sent enough soldiers to deal with them. Avedon has sent hands to investigate, but... What? They've been out in the wilds longer than they should have been. I am worried, and so is Avedon. I've been watching my back, and you should do the same. So, well, what are you doing? Can I see your wares? Okay, basic leather stuff. Traits in leather armor. Ooh, handy. Uh, what are you doing out here? Someone is selling steel weapons to the wretches. That is the sort of thing that could cause real problems. I think I have learned who is dealing with them. However, she isn't usually out in the wildlands of the south. Well, perhaps I can help. I thought you might. You are a hand, after all. I believe that the smuggler's name is Nire. She pretends to be a trapper, but I think she is much more. You might meet her if you travel south. If you do and can find proof that she is helping the wretches, she should be brought to justice. Otherwise, the problems we're having with the wretches will, here will only get worse. What makes you think she is responsible? Well, just yes, work. I watch the rows to see who goes where and when. When Nire has been to an area, wretch attacks soon follow, and the wretches are wielding new quality blades. Selling anything to the Farlands that would enable them to threaten the pact is a crime. Steel, knowledge, magic. A serious crime. One of the worst. Why do I need proof? He gives you an evil smile. Well, you are a hand of Avedon, so you need no proof at all. But I'd like to avoid killing the innocent. A matter of... craftsmanship, I suppose. Right. How should I bring her to justice? She should spend a long time in Avedon's dungeons. I'm a Mora could learn much from her. But that does not seem practical, so if she is truly guilty, death is probably the best option. That's all for now, thanks. And, uh, yeah. Well... That happened. Okay, boots. I did not expect that at all. That door will not be opened. That one is locked. Okay, then. Well, let's continue looking around. <laughs>